one mind zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. Tonight, I wanted to talk about something that um, will have a few words in it that may make you cringe. So I'm going to tell you what they are right off the top, and then you can, uh, if you can't purge the cringe, at least you can be aware of the cringe when you do it. Okay? So the first one is essence. A lot of people have a problem with the word essence because it it's a little spirit, soul kind of ego thing. And in this case, it's not. So get over it. The other one is uh, Mahayana, which a lot of people think is uh, in opposition to Hinayana. It's... Uh, I don't know, feeling superior somehow. And in this case, uh, it's not. There's no duality. It's just, we'll call it the great way in this regard. Okay? And uh, the other one is faith. And I know a lot of people really hate the word faith. And they're mostly the ones that have gotten involved in Zen and Buddhism because of their disdain for um, organized religion. And they think, Zen, oh, how much more disorganized can you be? I'm going with them. And then we throw out words like essence and faith. And, and you know, I'm sorry if that bums you out. But uh, like I said, put it all down and just be open to it. So what I actually wanted to talk about tonight is uh, the idea of essence function. <clears throat> and uh, essence, essence function is something that uh, was developed primarily in China and carried over and had a, a great influence in uh, Korea and to some extent in Japan and now over here uh, meh, probably because it involves the word essence so <clears throat> um, a lot of people have a, a hard time with this essence function thing like um, if it's essence in that like implying that there's some sort of thing that's functioning doing stuff and in a way uh yeah there is but it's one of those instances where we call it mind <clears throat> excuse me we call it consciousness uh we call it uh, the unity of all things throughout the universe, whatever you want to call it, essence is that. So we've got this Buddha nature. We'll, we'll take it at that point. And then, well, what's the function of that? What is it that Buddha nature does? And... In that regard, we can take a look at uh, the Bodhisattva, and we'll do that in a little bit. Essence function, and there's a hyphen in there. It's not essence and function or essence or function. It's essence hyphen function. You could even take the hyphen out and just run them together, and I'd be fine with that. It'd probably be harder to pronounce, though. If you're not familiar with the um, Two Truths Doctrine that uh, came out of Nagarjuna and the uh, Madhyamaka school, there's the absolute truth and then there's the relative truth. Like I said, the absolute truth, the essence, is the unity of all things, 
the I don't know. Uh, unimpeded ability to interpenetrate uh, the big picture, the macro. The relative, which is the other bit of the uh, two truths, is the day-to-day -day mundane, um, I'm me, you're you, you go to your job, I do mine, uh, you know, I eat food, I drink, I sleep, um, all that mundane stuff that's part of the quote-unquote real world. Uh, it's no more real than the absolute. In fact, there's really no difference between the absolute and the relative in the sense that you can't separate them. The relative manifests through the absolute, the absolute manifests through the relative, and again, you could just say it's absolute relative, and I would be fine with that with no space in between the two words. You could even sort of overlap them, which would be kind of interesting to see in print. So we've got this Buddha nature, and we've got things that we do with it. Now, uh, two of my favorites from the past, Huan Yo and Fa Zhang, both had uh, commentaries that they wrote on, here it comes, Awakening of Faith in the Mahayana. So Huan Yo and Fa Zhang, Huan Yo, the uh, Korean uh, scholar, Buddhist scholar, and Fatsang, who was the third patriarch of the Hawaiian school, both delved into the awakening of faith, the AFM. Um, they looked at it as a way of harmonizing the uh, ultimate truth and the conventional truth, the absolute and the relative. So it, it involves some Madhyamaka, it involves some Yogacara, two of the older schools of uh, Buddhism. The fact that Wanyo was involved in it meant that there was a really heavy uh, influence on uh, Korean Buddhism and Korean San as it goes forward. And the Huayan school, Hua Om in Korean, is also uh, a big thing in, in Korean Zen, in San. And this whole sort of interpenetration, unhindered, of all phenomena. is really influential in the teachings that we get from um, the Huayan Sutra and the Huayan school in general. Now, you might say to yourself, okay, this is all fine, this sounds rather intellectual and it's verging on conceptual. So what does that exactly mean as far as what I'm going to be able to do with it in day-to-day uh, -day life? I understand the concept of the absolute. I understand the con uh, concept of the relative. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, I don't see it, but I'll take your word for it. So there were a few... Um, metaphors that have been used to um, make this a little bit more concrete. The essence, you could say, is the noun, right? And function is the verb, okay? Now, going on with the tree metaphor, the roots are the essence. Without roots, there, you know, can be no tree. 
right? Uh, the function would fall into the uh, branches. So when you have branches, you're doing tree stuff. You're, you're waving in the breeze, you're producing leaves, you're doing all these things that trees do. But you can't do them without the roots being at the base of it and doing what the roots do. There's another one that um, comes to mind, and it's uh, familiar to me at least, and maybe to you if you heard the talk from right around a year ago that had to do with uh, untangling holiday lights. You could look on the holiday lights, the jumble, the crossed wires, the bunch of lights as essence and the act of untangling them and then actually hanging them on a tree or bush or whatever it is you might hang them from as function. To put it into more concrete, more relative, more right here, right now, if we look on the Buddha nature as essence and the Bodhisattva as a sub-essence, then what is the function of the Bodhisattva? It's a drop a coin in that Salvation Army bucket. It's donating to Toys for Tots. It's helping someone carry a whole bunch of packages when they can't see over the top of them because they over-consumed. Function is, in a nutshell, putting into practice, putting into action Peace on earth, goodwill towards you.